I'm Michael Lauder, Educational and Outreach Communications Manager with the Georgia Tech Center for Career Discovery and Development, as well as working closely with the Georgia Tech Communications Center. I help all job applicants, no matter what level, prepare themselves for their next step. This series is meant for first-year students seeking part-time employment, all the way through seniors and grad students entering the job field full-time and is about how to think of your resume, what to include, and more importantly, how to prioritize your information so that your resume will get read. The key to success in communication is giving people what they want and need. A recruiter wants to find out what you know and what you've done, and wants to find it out in as simple a way as possible. Here's how to put it together. Let's now take up the sections of your resume and what to put in them. Education will be your first section because you're still in school and a prospective employer will want to know that information first. Use reverse chronology here. Begin with the school you're currently attending. If you transferred in, list your previous school below and so on. If you're a freshman, you may list your high school below your college listing but you should remove it at the end of your first college year. You'll remove this information for the simple reason that in the professional world, it's assumed your life doesn't really begin until you're in college or start your first full-time job. The emphasis is on your current school, the first listing, so details belong here. Provide your expected date of graduation on the right. An employer will always want to know when you're available full-time. Include your expected type of degree and its subject. List a minor or concentration if you have one. Good line items here are also such topics as study abroad, the subject and country, certificates or licenses you've earned, your GPA, either in major or overall GPA. Use the larger of the two if you like. A note about grade point average, which can be the source of consternation for job seekers. If your GPA is under a three point, you should pause before you include it. Most companies consider that number to be not only good, but also a tool to weed out applicants. They might ideally seek new hires with only a GPA of above three. You probably have a very good reason for this number not being as stellar as you'd like. So keep that rationale in reserve. You might be asked about it in an interview. But unless a company requires you to post your GPA and it's under a three point, you might consider holding off inclusion. Never include anything on a resume you have to explain. A lower number calls for explanation. If a company requires it, however, you must list it. Let's now take up the sections of your resume and what to put in them. Your skills section will be after education, unless you have projects, research, or experience directly in your field. I'll discuss these sections next. Most students will not have any of these until later in their college career. So the heart of their resume and the first real meaty section will be skills. In this video, I'll be showing both freshman and upper class resumes so you can see how the content evolves. Plan on spending time developing this section and know you'll need to revisit it every semester as you add components. Break all your skills down into subsets beginning with your core field. All students, regardless of major or concentration, can use a skills section divided up into key areas that convey classroom knowledge, lab topics, languages spoken, musical instrument experience, basic business communication abilities, or athletics and leadership experience. The best way to begin your skills section is with your core strengths, such as your major, you will never list courses you've taken because that's the lazy way out. It's like telling a recruiter, here's what classes I've been in. Now you figure out what I know. As a freshman, you probably don't have any course experience yet. 
you will after you've taken some courses in your major. After you've taken courses in your major, you list the concepts from each course. What principles did you learn? What basics in the field? These nouns will be listed. If you're international affairs, list it as international affairs. If you're biomedical engineering, use BME. Your objective is to create a nuanced and complete section of all your skills. And, by the way, a skill is something that takes time, study, discipline, and attention to master or use. Any engaged and active student will have many of these nouns by the time of graduation. If you're an engineering or science major, you also will create a section called instrumentation, where you list all the equipment you've worked on. You'll have a subset for software or computer programs you've been exposed to and have used. You'll include your minor or concentration as another subset, such as math, econ, or finance. You want to use other facets of your strengths as well, such as spoken languages, musical skills, athletics. Critical for inclusion will be both communication and leadership because they're two subsets of strengths that employers actively seek in new hires. Communication might be nothing more than reports and presentations. Leadership is membership and office in organizations, both on campus and off. Something else you'll notice about this section. These nouns aren't linked with qualifiers. It's not necessary to state how many years you have experience or proficiency in a topic. Just use the noun, provide the details when asked in your interview. Remember to never list something you have no knowledge about. You'll be found out quickly. While these strengths are probably what an employer would want to know about, these nouns are also important because what is known as keyword search. Companies implement several computer applications that help winnow out less qualified candidates. Many of the concepts you learn in class will be on these lists. You can prevent being placed in an unread stack by using a comprehensive skills section in your resume. You will often get an interview based on a single line item, such as Excel, Java, or Python knowledge, fluid mechanics, Spanish, or experience with a certain piece of lab equipment. But you get the job based on your overall package. Much of your so-called package can be conveyed in a detailed skills section. Think of this section as a list of what's. What you know, what you've been exposed to, what direction you've taken. It can be the most powerful section of a resume for college students. Let's now take up the sections of your resume and what to put in them. Projects or research. You can break down the origins of your knowledge and skills by implementing projects and or research sections. Plus, creating these sections rather than lumping them into experience adds nuance and depth to your knowledge base and shows discipline, sustained activity, and rigor. Recruiters are becoming more interested in project sections on resumes because they often show the real work of a student or new hire. Projects can be group or individual and consist of capstone study, senior design, class group, and individual academic projects. A project is an assigned topic of inquiry or study that takes a specified period of time to complete and may involve any combination of experimentation, data acquisition and analysis, research, interviews, prolonged writing, and or presentation. Research is prolonged study which may have the same components and goals as a project, but is solitary and individual in its pursuit. And it's possible that an engaged and active student will have both sections in a later version of the resume. 
Let's now take up the sections of your resume and what to put in them. Let's take up the experience section. Simply put, all work counts. Avoid using the word relevant anywhere on your resume and especially here because it's a sure sign you're trying to read the mind of a hiring manager, which you cannot do. Rather, you should provide all information that will convey your work, engagement, involvement, and multifaceted abilities and help them see your hard work. List whatever you've done because employers want to know that you've been exposed to the world of work. Even if you think it's inconsequential, like mowing yards or babysitting, an employer will want to know that you can arrive on time when expected and that you will stay as long as needed to complete tasks. Experience usually refers to something you've done for monetary compensation. But if you have no real work experience, you probably have what you can term volunteer experience. Anything you've done in the community, any group you've joined to work without compensation in a voluntary capacity works well here. Volunteer experience also connotes community involvement, which is usually looked on favorably by a prospective employer. Let's now take up the sections of your resume and what to put in them. Now comes the leadership section. Many job descriptions list leadership as a required skill, and leadership is the least tangible of any skill group. Think of it as being an officer in on-campus organizations and a member of volunteer groups outside campus. That you've been elected to office, done work that you didn't have to do, or have taken care of others in any capacity says much about you. You also exemplify leadership through volunteer work. You'll want to include a leadership section when you can because it's a qualification of many intern, co-op, or other positions. Finally, you'll have the activities and honors section. This part of your resume can serve as a catch-all section where you can list things not so easily categorized, as well as scholarships, individual honors, competitions, and activities. It's usually the first section to be deleted once you have skills, experience, projects, or other dedicated sections and the details for them. Creating and prioritizing sections is key to success in getting your resume scanned and then read. Accessibility of information has to be your goal if you're to penetrate the barriers of job acquisition. Note that what you have with these subsets of skills is really just a list of nouns. You won't need qualifiers such as proficient with, three years knowledge of, and like phrases because the emphasis is on what you've been exposed to, not how much. Be prepared to explain how much you know about a certain topic in the interview. You'll be asked at that time how extensive your knowledge is. A note here. Never claim to know something you don't. It will be the first thing that will be found out about you. Once you've got your basic section set out, you'll know how to go about filling them with information critical to your success as an applicant.